As I was uh, going through the first reading this morning from Leviticus, it kind of reminded me of high school. Not that I had any lepers at St. Pat's, or I, I went to high school, but I have uh, various memories of my teachers, especially one teacher in particular, Miss Ryan, um, who was just a little overpowered by a smell I did not know at the time of teenage boys at an all-boy high school. She would constantly be lighting matches in her room to get rid of the smell, and many teachers had scented candles in their rooms, and so I, in Leviticus, are saying, you are unclean, you are unclean. That just reminded me of my teachers in high school. Not just to me, though, to the 900 teenage boys that were not showering and keeping good hygiene. But nonetheless, we're in our gospel, and... Uh, Jesus today, he does something very different from the old law, and that's what Jesus always does, right? So Jesus is the new law. He's saying that we had the old law, Moses and, and God and, and all the prophets, they, they preached the old law, and the law was there to help us as best we can to live a life of holiness. But the old law was imperfect, and it was imperfect because God had not yet come to redeem us. The old law in the Old Testament was us just trying to help each other. And if human history shows us anything, when it's just humans that are involved, nothing works. And so then we have the beautiful incarnation. Jesus comes down and he says, You have heard it said, but now I say to you. And so in Leviticus, we read of this, these very strict and off-putting laws around leprosy. And as soon as they know that you have leprosy, you must have it for a reason. You're a sinner, and so you have to sit way outside, away from society, and remind everybody that you're unclean so that nobody touches you. So that's the old law, the imperfect law. Jesus has a leper come to him, a leper who does not know that he's God, he doesn't call Jesus Lord, he doesn't call him Messiah, he doesn't say Son of Man, but he knows that Jesus has something. He's encountered the divine in Jesus. He doesn't know it, but he knows that Jesus can help him. And so he goes to Jesus and he's very specific and says, if you will it, you can make me clean. And Jesus doesn't cast him out. Jesus doesn't start quoting Leviticus. Jesus simply heals him. And also notice what the man is asking. He's asking to be turned from unclean to clean. He's not necessarily saying, Jesus, cure my leprosy. He's asking for something deeper. He's seeking salvation. Now granted, the man thinks he's a sinner because he has leprosy. So he knows that if the leprosy, well he doesn't know, he thinks if the leprosy is cured he'll no longer be a sinner because they attributed disease with sinfulness. But he still wasn't asking just to be cured. He was asking to be made clean. So my sisters and brothers, what we can learn from this courageous leper in the gospel is that we need to be just as specific with Jesus. I don't know about you, but I know for me, when I'm in a hurry, my prayer gets really short and very general. And so when I really want to pray for a long list of people very specifically, but I don't have a lot of time my prayer, unfortunately, is the first thing to go. And so I just say, Lord, you know my heart. You know what people need healing for. Please help them. And then I go on about my day. And I'm trying to fix that. Hopefully Lent will be a time I can fix that. But that sometimes happens. But see, Jesus wants us to be specific. He wants us to come to him daily in prayer and to actually ask him for what we need. And that prayer looks so different. It's so different to go at the end of the night before you go to bed and say, Lord, I want to thank you for my family compared to thank you, Lord, for my mom and all the sacrifices that she makes. Thank you, Lord, for my dad and all the things that 
that he's taught me. Thank you for my brother and my sister for helping me with whatever crisis. Thank you for my friends, for John and Joe and, and whoever. That's a very different prayer. Just like it's different to saying, you know, Lord, just help me, I'm going through a rough time. It's a very different prayer from, Lord, I'm really struggling with this loss. I really miss this person who passed away. Or, Lord, I'm really struggling with this sickness. I really need your help and your strength. Those are two totally different prayers. And when we get that specific, it opens our heart. And we're able to really love ourselves and to love others and the Lord in a different way because we've allowed our heart to open up more as we look at those specifics. And oftentimes when we use the guidance of the Holy Spirit in our prayer to get specific, we see that maybe what we think we want generally isn't really the deep desire of our heart. So friends, especially as we look forward to Lent beginning on Wednesday and Ash Wednesday, let's use this leper as a great model for how to pray, to be specific with God, to really ask him for what we truly desire in our heart, and even to thank him for the very right people that we want to thank him for, or the, the things, the blessings he's given us, so that our heart will open and we'll be able to love as Jesus loves.